My name is Richard McKenney. Uh, I'm a now associate professor at UC Davis uh, over here in Davis, California. Uh, I'm a graduate of uh, Richard Valley's lab at Columbia University, so I feel strongly connected to the uh, community at Columbia. And um, I got into the molecular motors field through uh, Richard Valley's uh, work and, and my work in his lab, uh, where, where I've been in the field ever since. Um, my original works were on uh, other types of motor proteins, but uh, since founding my own lab in 2016, uh, I've been focused on a variety of different molecular motors and KIF-1A became a, a part of our uh, interest and a larger and larger part of our interest through uh, collaborative works with multiple people, many of whom are in the KIF-1A.org uh, network. Can you describe at a, at a broad scale what your research interests are? We are a, uh, I would say, a biochemistry and biophysics lab. So we're very interested in uh, proteins as uh, we view them as molecular machines. So we're interested in dissecting how those machines work at a at a atomic or molecular level, and uh, we under we're interested in the biochemical reactions that drive uh, protein function and the biophysical properties that the proteins use to perform their roles in, uh, within cells. And so in the case of KIF-1A and kinesins in general, uh, their, their molecular motors, meaning that they convert chemical energy uh, from ATP hydrolysis into mechanical work, uh, meaning they move uh, just like your car converts chemical energy from fuel into mechanical energy uh, in motion. So we're very, very interested in understanding how the molecular, what are the molecular details behind that ability? And then of course, uh, for relevance of this, community, what are the consequences when something goes wrong in that process? What kind of uh, model systems or assays do you use to answer those kinds of questions? We, uh, being a protein biochemistry lab, we um, are typically working in uh, sort of the test tube, right? We're working with purified proteins. Um, so we don't, we're not a, a lab that uses, um, say, mice or worms as a model system regularly, but rather we are uh, purifying proteins and uh, assaying those proteins under very defined conditions. Uh, and so our, our model system, if you will, is uh, uh, a biochemical uh, reaction assay that contains uh, the proteins that we uh, purify and put in there. And so in the case of KIF-1A, we are uh, purifying KIF-1A and its different variants and uh, using a variety of biophysical and biochemical assays to determine how that motor works and what goes wrong with that motor uh, when there's different uh, uh, variations in the sequence. As somebody who's studying KIF-1A in such a direct manner, such a molecular manner, uh, what gaps in knowledge or things would you like to address that would both, you know, help move your research forward, but also, you know, help us find answers, potential therapeutics, or additional tests that we could do to better understand and treat KIF-1A associated neurological disorder? Yeah, that's a great question. And, you know, from my view as a sort of bottom-up uh, approach uh, uh, scientist, if you will, uh, I like to think about a problem as we're not going to fully understand what's going wrong with this motor until we can fully understand how the motor works in a normal way. And so um, I think we still have a lot of open questions about how KIF-1A uh, moves along microtubules, uh, what are the structural transitions and the protein organization as that molecule is working. Uh, and uh, so I, I want to, I think along those lines uh, in my day to day. And, uh, and so I think one of the biggest questions uh, that is, remains unclear to the field is what is the structural organization or, or uh, um, molecular organization of the KIF-1A motor? Uh, and so we have, there's been a, a rich history of structural biology in uh, the KIF-1A field where we have a lot of very, very clear atomic level pictures of a small part, part of the motor, the motor domain, which is probably the most relevant but uh, we don't have a good picture at all of the rest of the motor. And it's worth remembering that there's quite a lot of uh, protein sequence that we don't know anything about at this structural level. And so I think that until we know the uh, sort of what does that look like, uh, we can't form uh, good hypotheses about how the motor works 
normally, and then also what goes wrong when there's uh, variations in the motor sequence. So having, having an atomic level um, structural detailed picture of the, of the KIF-1A motor, I think would bridge a huge gap in the field for understanding how KIF-1A works uh, normally and also what goes wrong uh, when it doesn't. Are there any other uh, thoughts as we close out that you have for the canned either research or patient community? Well, I think, you know, after being a uh, part of this community, it's really invigorated our research largely because of the community. So, you know, our, our lab focuses on uh, several other uh, projects that are outside of KIF-1A. And I can say with certainty that those projects don't have the type of community that KIF-1A uh, has around it. And that community has really uh, strongly driven our, our interest level and also our, our um, drive to understand uh, you know, how KIF-1A works because we can see the uh, effects and consequences of this disease on real people and real families. And, and the feedback that I've received from the community has been wonderful and, and gracious. And um, it's really put a personal touch on this research project for us. And I think that that's the first time I've experienced that in uh, I guess almost 20 years of research now. And so that, that aspect of KIF-1A research and KIF-1A.org's role here has been a huge for us. And so um, I wanna put that as a very important thought uh, for the community that uh, I think everybody who is responsible for this community is uh, doing a great job to invigorate and inspire us researchers to uh, push harder on what we're doing uh, because it's making uh, uh, an impact in people's lives. So I wanna thank everybody for that.